Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. Hey everybody, Miss McCarthy here, and welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp for third grade. This is video number three. I'm really excited that you're here, and we're gonna go ahead and jump on into today. So I'm hoping that you already have the worksheet that you need for today for video number three. And what I want you to do is go ahead and in a second, you're going to pause the video and work out the problems on your own. That way you can come on back and check your work and see if you can pick up, rack up any extra tips and strategies that you can for this series. If you're like, wait a minute, Miss McCarthy, I don't have the worksheet yet. If you look at the description box below or somewhere around this video, there will be a link that you can click to take you to the worksheets that you need for this lesson. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Try number one and number two on your own for today's video and then press play when you're ready to check your work. All right, everybody, welcome back. So now it's time to check your work and compare your work with my work. Now I'm gonna be marking all over this text. Why am I gonna be making all kinds of notes? Because that's how I show my thinking on paper. And you know what? When I show my thinking on paper, it helps to slow me down and really think through these problems. That's what I want for you guys too, okay? So grab your pencil. No, that's a banana. Let's grab your pencil. I'm gonna take my pen and let's go ahead and look at this problem. All right, so first let's talk about the question type. It really helps us when we understand the question type because then we kind of have a better idea of how to tackle it. So right away I'm seeing A, B, C, D choices. Um, and when we have that, that's either a multiple choice or a multi-select problem. Now I'm gonna guess that because it's only four choices, it is a multiple choice. Okay, so jot that down in there if you did not already. It's a multiple choice question. Now, I'm still gonna go through it like I would a multi-select by looking at every single answer choice and either keeping or eliminating them. Okay, so let's go ahead and read the first time to get the gist, okay? Alexis drinks 32 ounces of water over a time period of four hours. If she drinks an equal amount of water each hour, how many ounces does she drink each hour? That was a lot going on there, but let me get the gist of the problem. I know I have somebody named Alexis, right? And what is Alexis doing in this problem? Yeah, she's drinking water. So now I'm picturing this girl drinking water and that helps me to better understand what I'm doing with this question, okay? So now it's time for me to mark up my text. I'm gonna go back through and mark it up. Now you might be using the cube strategy. Um, if your teacher has a, you using a specific strategy, that is totally cool. For me, I just kind of mark it up as I think about it. Okay, so it says Alexis drinks 32 
ounces of water. Yum. I drink a lot of water too. Do you drink enough water? Do ya? <laughs> Over a period of four hours. So in four hours, she drinks 32 ounces, right? Awesome. If she drinks an equal amount, equal amount of water each hour, here's my question. How many ounces does she drink each hour? Now, before I even look at the answer choices, I'm gonna make sure that this problem makes sense. I'm gonna draw it out because when in doubt, I draw it out. That's right. So we have somebody named Alexis. Everybody say, hey, Alexis. And Alexis drinks 32 hours over a period of four hours. One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Okay. One, I'm gonna put H, two for hour two, H, three for hour three, and H, four for hour four. And all together, she drinks how much? 32 ounces. This is just how my brain is thinking about this problem. Now, if she drinks an equal amount of water each hour. So, wait a minute. We know the total and we know how many hours there are. She's drinking an equal amount. We're distributing it equally. So which operation is going on here? Yeah, it's division. You know the total and you distribute equally. Okay, so 32 ounces of water, four hours. I'm going to distribute those ounces into each hour. Count with me, okay? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm counting all the way up to what? Yeah, 32. Each one of these is an ounce. So that was eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now what do I do for five to make a five? Yeah, I slash it through, right? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm gonna start over 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, I'm almost there. 29, 30, 31, 32, everybody go, woo, we made it to 32. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so back to the question, how many ounces does she drink each hour? Well, here's hour number one and she drank how many? Yeah, five, six, seven, eight. She drank eight ounces. And then in hour number two, she drank eight ounces. And then in hour number three, she drank eight ounces. And then in hour number four, she drank eight ounces. So how many ounces of water does she drink in each hour, in just one hour? Yeah, eight ounces, which would be answer choice what? Yeah, it would be D. But let's go through each one, okay? Because I want you to be thinking about it. Because on the FSA, they're always trying to put some answers in there to see if you understand what's going on. That might be trying to trick you if you don't understand which operation's going on. So let's put a question mark for D real quick. All right, Alexis drinks 36 ounces each hour. We see 32 and we see four and a student could have gotten confused and joined them together or added them to get 36. Yeah, but that's not right. This question, we knew the total and we were distributing them equally, right? All right, now choice B says Alexis drinks 28 ounces each hour. Now we know that choice B is not the correct answer, but what might a student think that would cause them to choose choice B? Yeah, they might think that 32 minus four would equal 28, right? But that's not it. All right, and now Alexis drinks nine ounces each hour. Somebody might choose this just because they maybe counted wrong or they thought in their head that 32 divided by four was equal to nine, but that is not correct. We know that the answer choice is choice D. So make sure you bubble it in nice and dark, just like that. Let's go ahead and look at number two. All right, so now we're at number two and number two says match each scenario to its correct missing value. Okay, so before we even get started with the question, let's look at what the question type is. This is the type where we have to match this row to its correct column. This is called a matching item response. We have to match the row to the correct column. Let's go ahead and start with the first row and we're gonna read it to get the gist. So it says, David creates six piles of dominoes with an equal amount in each pile. If he has a total of 48 dominoes, how many dominoes are in each pile? So we have somebody named 
David. And, and what does David have? He has dominoes and he's putting them into piles. Got it. I've got somebody in my head named David and he's putting these dominoes into piles. Now, when in doubt, I'm going to draw it out. So the question is, how many dominoes are in each pile? The answer is either going to be seven, eight, or nine. We've got somebody named David. Everybody say hi, David. All right, David creates six piles of dominoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just for the pile, each circle will represent a pile. Four, five, six piles, okay, of dominoes with an equal amount in each pile. If he has 48 total dominoes, so we know the amount of dominoes that he has. If he has 48 total dominoes, how many dominoes are in each pile? We're taking the total and we are distributing them equally. So which operation is that? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Yeah, it's division, right? Okay, so we have 48 total and we're going to distribute those 48 total into these six piles. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. Now back to the question, the squiggly question. How many dominoes are in each pile? So pick any pile, pick any pile. Let's pick this one. How many dominoes are in that pile? Eight, right? Each one has eight dominoes in each. So because of that, are we gonna select A, which is seven, B, which is eight, or C, which is nine? Yeah, for this one, for this scenario, we're gonna bubble in B, eight. Okay, let's look at the next scenario, that was fun. Mrs. Rose has 27 students in her acting class. She arranges the students into three rows of students with, e with an equal number of students in each row. How many students are in each row? Okay, so that was to get the gist. We have somebody named Mrs. Rose, and she is the teacher of Anne acting class and she's arranging students into rows. Okay, that's the gist. Let's mark up our text. Mrs. Rose has 27 students in her acting class. All right, we've got somebody named Mrs. Rose and she has 27 students in her acting class. Okay, we'll get to those students in a minute. So I'll just put that she has 27 students. She arranges, you know what arranges means? It means like she groups or she organizes them. She arranges the students into three rows. A row goes across. So I'm going to draw one, two, three rows with an equal number of students in each row. So each row has the same number of students. The question is, squiggle it out, how many students are in each row? So how many students are in one row? We know the total number of students, which is what? 27, awesome. We know the number of rows and we're taking the students and we are distributing them equally into rows. We know the total, we're distributing them equally. So which operation is that? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Yeah, it's division. Division is when we know the total and we distribute equally. So 27 students. One, two, three students. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Hopefully these students are not laying on top of each other like that. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, awesome. Now the question said, how many students are in each row? Count them up. We've got five plus four, which is what? Nine, that's right. Nine, which would be choice F. Final row, let's go ahead and read it to get the gist. It says that Stevie paints seven paintings a day. Wow, that's a lot of paintings. Until she has 49 paintings in all. How many days does she paint? So we have somebody named who? Stevie, right? And Stevie, what is she doing in this problem? 
She's painting paintings. Let's go ahead and mark up our text. So we have Stevie who paints seven paintings a day until she has 49 paintings in all. So let's draw somebody named Stevie. A little S there so we know it's her. And she paints seven paintings a day. So if this was, um, let's say Monday, Monday, how many paintings would she paint on Monday? Seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And she keeps painting until she has 49 paintings in all. And the question says, how many days does she paint? So here's one day, which gives us seven. If we had another day, we'll call it Tuesday. That would be seven, so then we have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Do we have 49 paintings in all yet? Nope, so she must paint another day. So we have Monday, Tuesday, and now let's make up a Wednesday. That sounds good. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I hope that you're counting with me. We still don't have 49, so let's move to Thurs. I almost said Thursday. Thursday. A couple episodes ago it was Sowie gummy worms, and now it's Thursday. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we have 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Do we have 49 yet, boys and girls? Uh, no, we don't. We're going to keep going. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now we have Friday. Out with me. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. What? What? Do we have 49 total paintings yet? Nope. So Stevie, she wakes up on the weekend. And she paints on Saturday. That would be 36. Count with me. 37, 38, 39, 40. 41, 42. Woo, she's getting close, but are we at 49 yet? No. Stevie says, hey, I know it's Sunday, but my goal is to have 49 paintings, so I'm going to paint. Last time it was 42. Count with me. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Woohoo! So we got to 49, but we know our answer could only be 7, 8, or 9. So let's go back to what the question was asking us to do. That's why I squiggle it out, so we go back to check it. How many days does she spend painting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm marking G, the letter G, because that is in the same row. It matches right there. I want this answer to be seven, which is right under there. If you are saying, woohoo, I did great, that is awesome. And if you're like, oh man, I really need to practice this more, that's okay too, okay? That's why I'm here for you. So the very first link that you will see is to McCarthy Math 155. This is a 155 lesson program where I break down all the third grade skills that you need to know. Schools are loving this. Students are loving this. So please check it out. They're high energy. They're jam-packed. And you can totally grab a free seven-day trial to check out these days, okay? So when you sign up for your free trial, you're going to go to unit four, day 55 through 57. The second link that I have in the description box below or somewhere around this video is to the How to Pass the Math FSA lesson that goes with this one. The How to Pass the Math FSA series was something that I created a couple years ago. Now things have changed a little bit on the FSA. What we're doing in these videos is the most updated version of what you'll see. The other ones, the how to pass the math FSA series, they're great, but you also need to understand that some of the questions have changed a little bit. Some of the question styles have changed. So just be aware of that. It's a great tool though to help you get your brain right and ready with these skills. I also encourage you to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm on Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And I'm on YouTube, obviously, at McCarthy Math Academy. Please do me a favor and pop a thumbs up on that like button. It helps me to know that you like the content that I'm putting out and so I can continue to put out more videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe. That way you are the first to know when I launch a new video. Before we go, I just want you to know that you were born for a reason. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we've got a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up. Remember that when you have the choice to choose kindness and I'll see you on the next episode.